Hey there YouTube fans, AC Productions here, and today I'm going to be showing you an inexpensive way on how to change the color of your gauge cluster. Now, as most of some, I just wanted to show you, I just want to say a quick note that most of you guys know that I was kind of sick for a little while, but I am back to normal and ready to create more awesome video and content for you guys. All right, so now getting back to the gauge cluster. Now you're wondering how to actually change the gauge cluster. Now, if you guys notice that on your 2015 to 2018, the gauge cluster is actually white over here. So in order to actually do an inexpensive way to actually change this color, we're going to be using these filters. Now here are the filters that I got. Pretty much they're, they're actually really big. Uh, you can see it on the camera, but yeah, they're pretty big. I, I thought they're going to be a lot smaller, but that's okay because then it'll give us room to actually put it over here and actually cut to, to size. So I got a blue one, a red one, green one, pink. Okay, I think this one might be yellow, but it could also be neon green, orange. This one I believe is like a pink, red color, and then we got purple. So these are pretty much the colors you can select from. I noticed that when I had placed my order on to see if there was any other colors, they didn't really have much selection, but that was pretty much all the main colors that they had. Okay, so let's get started. Let me show you the tools that you're gonna need to remove your gauge cluster off of your bike. Okay, now these are going to be the tools that you're going to need for the screen. We'll start over here with the main part underneath all this is the cutting board. So we're going to be needing posty notes put for the screen so we could get our to make our template so we could actually cut to size. A microfiber towel so we could rest our gauge cluster on. A cutting board. This has like two blades on it so you can make straight cuts. If you don't have a cutting board, you can use scissors. Next would be a little cloth. This is the one for glasses. If you wear glasses or if you have sunglasses, you could use, you use, normally would use a cloth like this. This is, uh, I would say this is a lot better than, uh, would be more suggested to use something like that compared to a mi microfiber cloth to clean the gauge cluster just due to that sometimes these microfiber cloths can do fine line scratches compared to this will not do that. A Sharpie pen. This is a, a fine point Sharpie pen. An X-Acto blade, which is right over here. Some tape and isopropyl alcohol will be used with the cloth towel uh, to clean the gauge cluster. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna have to remove this panel here. So, well actually, we're gonna have to remove this panel here to access to this panel. So, remove the screw right over here, remove a screw right over here to remove that panel. After that, we're gonna remove this panel right over here. And that's gonna be one screw over here, one screw over here. And on the inside of this panel, I'll point it with my finger, you probably won't be able to see it with the camera, but there is a plastic screw right over here. And then there is another one right over here. So one, two for plastic screws and then the metal ones are out here over here removing this panel also this one here and that one there so let's go ahead and remove all those parts I also forgot to mention that what you want what you do on one side you want to make sure you do it on the other side because we have to make sure that we remove both parts to get to that this area here which we're also going to be removing as well all right guys so to remove your gauge cluster is pretty simple all you have to do is just remove these two bolts on each side which is right there so if you see that little bolt right there just go ahead and remove it with your eight millimeter open and wrench or socket so there's one here on this side and then there's one on the other side there it is there's the other bolt right there so just go ahead and remove those two bolts and that would remove your whole gauge cluster out of its place and i just just remove the plug behind it Okay, now that I got the boot removed, you're gonna see that there's a little tab right there where my finger is. So push that tab, push it down, and then pull out the plug. Okay, once you get the plug off, here is our gauge cluster. All right, guys, I'm gonna have to kind of show you the video in kind of this angle just because I don't have the, the space in this direction to kind of show you head on. All right, so next we're gonna do is we're going to remove the screws behind here because we need to take apart the, pla the front part of the plastic of the gauge cluster to get access to the inside. So now first things first, we're going to go ahead and remove these three screws. So one, two, and three. After removing those uh, three screws, you're going to notice that there's little smaller screws on the inside. So there is one here, one over here. There is one behind over here, 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 and here. As far as I could see uh, with the bracket in the spot. But pretty much you want to remove every single screw that you see back here and then i'll show you what to do next also for, uh, forgot to mention and i think would be a good idea 
to prevent any scratches. If you don't have any protection like I do uh, with the front gauge cluster, I do have a screen protector on all these pieces. It would be a good idea to get a microfiber towel and just lay it here on your work table and then face this on the bottom. At least you'll know that your front of your gauge cluster won't get scratched. Okay, now that we got all of our screws removed from the gauge cluster, now we're gonna go ahead and pull it apart. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put these little screws off to the side so I don't lose them. So we move the camera off to the side a little bit more so you guys can see. So let's go ahead and pop this guy off. I, oh, there we go. I guess it was, since I've never taken it apart, it was actually a little rough as you could see to get it off. All right, so now that I've kind of popped it out, I'm just gonna go ahead and face this down actually. Oh, it actually is just the cover and the main part is here. Okay, so I thought the, the top part of this was just gonna come off, but uh, well it did, but not from the gauge cluster part. All right, so this bottom part is just a plastic piece. As you guys could see, uh, nothing there. All right, so we're gonna put this off to the side. So now let's see what's behind here. Well, that's pretty cool. It's my first time actually looking at the gauge cluster and how it actually looks from the inside. And it might be for you as well. So pretty interesting to see what's the in how the inside of the gauge cluster looks and all the internals. All right, so it looks like for us to actually remove uh, the backing of this cluster, let me see if it, it kind of just comes out. Uh, and it looks like it does not, but there is some screws here, so we're gonna have to go ahead and remove some screws. So there is one over here, two, and it looks to be only two screws holding the cluster in. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these two screws. So this one here and this one here, go ahead and do that. And then I think this uh, this part of the circuit board of the cage closure should come right out. Okay, now that we got those two screws out, all right, so let's go ahead and see if the gauge cluster will come out now. Now that I removed those tools, and it does, it seems to come out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip it over just because I don't want any dust particles to uh, kind of get on the inside, which even though there's some that one spot over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it out like so. And you wanna make sure you do it carefully. All right. All right, so here is the underside or the other side of the gauge cluster uh, from the in the internal point of view. Here's what, you <clears throat> Here's what you see on the outside. This is how it looks like on the inside. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this off to the side facing downwards. And now we are with the internal part of the R3 gauge cluster. All right, so now what we need to do is we want to make sure that we uh, get to this part you know what now that i'm here i'm gonna go ahead and remove that little speck because that was bothering me and now that i saw it up close all right so what we want to do is we want to get to this part of the gauge cluster the lcd screen i'm not sure if i'm able to pop out that needle or not but i'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna actually remove those two screws so as you can see just make sure that you're very careful removing this screw here moving the needle a little bit and remove that screw over there now, once we remove those two screws, we should be able to actually slide uh, this cardboard piece maybe uh, off to the side if I'm not able to, if we're not able to remove the needle. Um, I don't think I would want to remove the needle because you know you don't want to set it incorrectly. But uh, we're going to take it a step at a time and and see. So maybe by just by removing those two screws, we'll be able to remove this uh, this part off to the side to gain access to the LCD screen. Okay, now that we got our two screws out, um, I did try off camera on seeing if I'm able to remove the little needle, and I, I'm not able to, and I don't, um, I don't recommend trying to, because it just looks like, uh, I'm not sure if you guys could see that, but the, the little post that's holding the needle up looks just like plastic, so I think if I were to try to force to pop that thing out, I think I would just break it. And honestly, guys, I don't think it's worth it. So um, I was going to say just to just leave it on there. Don't try to mess with it. You're you are able to move the needle, though, uh, in increments, I guess. It's just a, uh, a brushless motor back here that controls that part. But once you plug it in, it should go to zero. So just moving it around, it's not going to cause any harm. So that's good. All right, so next we're gonna do is we're going to, um, as you can see that this cardboard piece is like has some see-through part for the, the lights actually to show through. And it's actually held a little tab, a little slot over here and over here to kind of hold it in its place. But if you were to lift it up gently, 
and then you're able to actually move it in a well, obviously only in a, in a, out of the way in a circular motion like this we're able to get access to the LCD screen so as I thought it's an actual rectangle LCD screen and you could see here's the other part so from here to here is the actual screen and when we actually see our bikes it's only divided by this part over here that separates you know this part from that part uh, on what we see so right now what we're gonna do is get our you know you know pick a color of your choosing I think I'm gonna start off with maybe I'm gonna start off with a lighter color and probably use it as a template so we could actually uh, you know get the other stuff down so I think I'll start off with maybe let's see maybe this neon yellow green color just to get the, the markings down so if you were to slide it in it actually has like a little bit of a channel here or a little bit of a spacing that we could actually use to uh, mark our template or whatnot so I'm gonna go ahead and use this one but I'll probably end up using the red color because my bike is red and if your bike is blue you could use blue or you could just you know whatever you got you guys want you know you do have all those those colors you could probably change it up every so often if you like and uh, go from there so right now I'm gonna just put it in like so and then I'm gonna leave this part open like that or up like this so I could actually mark over here in this area see if you guys could see a little bit better so now that I slid this, this the screen a little bit further and make sure that it is um, you know properly lined up right and then I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna use our marker and we're going to preferably use a, a thin pointed marker so we can make our lines so like I said get it all the way to the edge of the LCD screen and then make your marking so I'm gonna make a mark over here and then I'm gonna make a mark over here in the corner and oh down here as well so just mark all the areas where you're going to be cutting. So we're going to go ahead and mark over here, over here, and over there. I want to make our cut, and then we're going to go ahead and see if it, it lines up perfectly. So go ahead and make your markings, and then cut out your piece. And then we're going to take it from there. Okay, so the marker that I'm going to be using is going to be a uh, Sharpie with a very fine tip. would be optimal to use, not a fat marker. All right, so let's go ahead and like I said, just make sure you make your markings and uh, use a, a pen like a little marker like this would work best. Okay, so I uh, did my markings as you can see right around there. So the marking here, here and here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get our cutting board. Uh, so we, with the cutting board, we're able to make even straighter lines. If you don't have a cutting board, go ahead and use your scissors to uh, cut the little square out. So I decided to use the kind of the edge of the sheet just because, you know, at least we know this part is two uh, lines that are, are extremely straight. I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and cut this part out. And then I'm going to go ahead and put it back on here to see if it's the right size and fits perfectly good there. Okay, now that we already cut our piece, which is right over here. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can move it to you guys so you guys can see a little bit better. Just let me put the gauge cluster on my little... Um, little bean bag here. All right, hopefully you guys can see this a little bit better. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in its spot, see if it fits nicely. So go ahead, keep going until it reaches the edge there, and it looks like it fits fairly well. Let's see, we could just line it up just a little bit better. I may have to trim just a little bit more, but I think right about there looks like uh looks pretty good so i may have to just trim just a little bit off but as you can see it's uh covering the lcd screen and it's looking pretty good all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this as a template for now uh make, like i said i'm going to trim just maybe just a little bit because i kind of want it to fit really nicely in there if i were to press it i think actually i think it's right on the money actually i don't i don't think i have to trim anything so when I press it in, it actually hold, it stay, it stays in place. So, all right. So, unfortunately, with these, um, they're not adhesive. So when you peel off the the protective coat, you know, the protective film that's on both sides, it's not sticky. So it's not going to stick when you stick it on here. But since there, as you can see here at the bottom, this is pretty much where uh, like the computer chip or whatever meets the the board or whatnot. 
I think what we're going to do is we're just going to get a piece of clear tape and then just kind of put it along here because that's the part you're not going to see anyway because of the border of the cover. And we're just going to put a little piece right here that's going to touch the this plastic piece and then it's going to kind of wrap to the bottom here. And that should do a good enough job to actually hold this piece in. And you don't have to worry about it, you know, falling over or whatnot. So I think that that's what we're going to do. And it, it'll hold it in place, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, I'm going to use this as a template. And I'm going to use it to, uh, you know, cut my other pieces over here. Actually, guys, I wanted to kind of show you something that I think would be pretty cool. Uh, since we do have these, uh, you know, different color see-through filters or whatever it is you want to call them, you could actually get creative with your gauge cluster. If you notice that obviously when you move it, obviously there's LEDs behind it to illuminate, you know, the numbers. Because if you look right in there, you could actually see the little small LEDs, the little small LEDs that are inside. And that's for, you know, your target signals, your your brights and neutral. If you like see that when I move that part down, you can actually see the little LEDs that are in this location. So you could, like I said, you guys could get creative with this. And if you wanted to change the color of your numbers, because everything is really lit up in white anyway. So if you wanted to get, you know, your numbers, you know, in a different color, you know, like I said, guys, you guys could get creative, you know, you know, get the, the film or whatnot, and then just slide it in like so, where you know it's going to, you know, cover the numbers like this. Obviously, the, the needle over here is covering so it doesn't go all the way through. But if you were to kind of eyeball it, you know, give it a, a marking like around over here and then just kind of cut like a slit here, you could actually slide this over past and maybe cover the whole thing or maybe from the from the from the front end you know make your markings and you know cut like a slit uh you know maybe from this side maybe to go this way you know cut a slit this way that way you could pass uh through the needle so when you slide it through it slides up to right there and therefore you'll get everything in that color so like I said, I'm not going to be using this color in per se, but say you, you have a, a blue and you wanted to use blue. So you would slide this through, make your slit, make your adjustments. Therefore, you have your blue LCD plus you'll have blue numbers. Your your needle will still be white, but the numbers and everything will be blue. That's so that, that, I think that would be a pretty cool idea as well. But for me right now, I'm just going to concentrate on just making this part blue. That way I have a little bit of a contrast between the blue and the white. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So... Like I said, you could you guys could experiment. If you guys do experiment, and if you're able to, maybe post a, a picture below. I'm not sure if YouTube allows to post a picture with your comment, but if you are able to, or you find a way to do it, uh, I would love to see your, your guys' work. You know, post below if you can. If not, maybe you guys could uh, you know shoot me a, a picture of your work. I'm also on Instagram. I'll have a link below to my Instagram, or I'll have a you know, a link right here uh, in the video so you guys could check me out on Instagram. All right, so let's get back to the uh, the gauge close. I didn't want to veer off, but I kind of, as I was doing this, you know, was getting the flow of ideas going, so I just kind of wanted to share it with you guys. I already just finished doing this red one, and it's uh, looking really cool. I can't wait to get it on the bike and see how it actually looks. But I also came across this uh, when I did the blue one. The blue one's kind of light. Now, if you guys wanted to, you know, um, make it a little bit darker just cut yourself another square or another rectangle and it'll make the the, the the blue a little bit more darker and again it could be because of the protective film that it has that it's making it look like a lighter blue or whatnot just cut yourself another piece so as you can see it's light here but when you put the second piece obviously it's going to get a little bit a little bit one shade darker so just something to think about when you guys go to the bike, say you guys don't like it, just cut yourself another piece or just cut yourself already another piece. That way it'll be more simple to just, to just get it. We may just go to the bike just like this uh, since we have everything already apart and test it out to see how it would look. And if it's to your liking, then you can start putting everything back together. That way you guys don't have to do double the process. So like I said, it only seems to be with the blue. Um, I may do it with the red too. I'm not sure how, how the red it looks like. And don't worry about your fingerprints because like I said, there is the protective coating. You may want to wash your hands again if you do have some oil on your hands before making the final thing. So uh, right now I'm just cutting out all the pieces. I'm going to cut them out on each individual or each color to put on here. 
uh, to show you guys the different colors. Uh, so right now I'm just with the red right now and like I said uh, once I make it final I will be washing my hands all over again and removing the film from the front and the back before actually really putting it on there. I just want to show you another thing I keep on coming across these parts uh, is that uh, I was since we know that there's LEDs here and there's LEDs here I was thinking that there's gonna be a whole bunch of LEDs over here but actually if I were to rotate this guys for you this is uh, pretty interesting okay well here's LEDs for this part but for the numbers themselves there is no LEDs it's just all white plastic as you can see as I turn it it's just all white plastic there is no LEDs so how the heck does the numbers illuminate so if you really look inside so I could turn it I don't want to like I said try to do the best I can without damaging I don't want no damage here there's one LED here which seems to reflect up here everything looks like to be a a um, like a curve like a cone shape so it reflects up to this white part which reflects to this part which illuminates that area there's only two LEDs in this area for your RPMs one right there and the other one is located right there there we go and then there's the other LED so right here and right over there are the two only LEDs that seem to light up up to this plastic the white plastic over here which reflects over here to light up the numbers who would have thought that's uh that's very interesting to see you know the behind the scenes of of these products and how they're you know made i guess it was a way for yamaha to cut costs or something which i could only imagine that those little leds those little tiny micro leds don't really cost anything they're probably pennies to the dollar so why would they cheap out on that department? Well, anywho, I just kind of wanted to show you guys that little behind the scenes uh, view as I was taking everything apart and looking at everything very closely. Okay, so I'm already done cutting all my pieces. As you could see, I laid them out. Now here are all the pieces that uh, I had cut out. Because like I said, I'm going to be putting each one in here and then turning it on so you guys could see uh, the different colors. Now, like I was mentioning before, if you guys want to get creative and actually illuminating these numbers that'd be a nice project to do and actually I decided to take it a step further for myself and decided to do that so instead of doing that whole place I decided to actually just cut like a little C I uh, made my measurements and just decided to cut up only up to the number 11 but not to the 13 so that way the only that uh, from 11 and actually number that is number 12 all the way down to zero would be illuminated in the color I decided just to like blue because like I said I'm gonna be selecting red as my main over here so after my making my measurements and right about right there I'm not gonna be sticking this on the on the way I'm showing you now I'm just kind of showing you so you guys could see the template that I kind of made uh, for the gauge color. so I would have this as red this as blue but I'm gonna put this on the inside and then just probably put a little piece of tape to hold it in place on the inside as just like a little bit of added bonus to like you know just to to to, to um, mix it up a little bit you know instead of having just white and red or whatever so I'm gonna put that in right now uh, I'll probably actually put that in as a, a bonus at the end of the video or end of you know all the showing all the colors so you guys could see the differences and how it would look if you guys were to like do a mix and match or whatnot or maybe you want you know this color to be one you know if you were to do blue if you maybe wanted to do this blue and this blue you can like i said everything is personal preference it's solely up to you on how you want to do it or you could do a mix and match kind of color on you know with the colors that come in the kit so and you guys could do however you guys want to do all right so i'm going to go ahead and i'll put the red piece right in right now so i'm going to be putting this a little bit later but right now i'm going to go ahead and grab this red piece and then uh we're going to stick it in here so before we do that, we're going to move this obviously off to the side and you want to make sure that everything is clean and clear of dust and debris. You definitely don't want to be putting this stuff in with a, a dirty screen or whatnot with fingerprints obviously because we're working on it. So the little thing that I use to clean my glasses is be the best thing to use to wipe down the LCD screen. And then after we do that, you know, we're going to go ahead and peel off the, the protect the film on both this side and the other side before putting it in its place and then we're going to put a little piece of tape over here to kind of hold this piece in its spot because like i said this is not it doesn't have any adhesive 
so it's not going to stick once we peel off the backing. But before all of that, I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands because obviously you could see that I have fingerprints all over this and I definitely don't want to have any fingerprints when I do the final part. So go ahead, if you also have oily hands like I do, you know, make sure that you uh, go and wash your hands thoroughly before doing this particular step. Okay, now that my hands are thoroughly clean and with no, no oily fingers, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to peel off the protective film. So it'd be kind of tricky to actually get to it, but if you have sharp fingernails, you're able to peel off a little corner of it and then just get the rest of it. So let's go ahead and peel it off. Peel off one side and then go ahead and peel off the other side. At the same time, even though if your hands are really clean, try not to get any uh, smudges on the film itself. Okay, at this time I may use an X-Acto knife to see if I can actually get the edge of the film. Okay, now that I got that one edge, go ahead and remove the protective film. Okay, now that we got the protective film off, Okay, sorry about that guys, looks like the camera battery kind of died as I was talking at that last video. So pretty much you just want to make sure that you get all the dust particles off of there. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of dust on the front side of it. I was able to get everything on the other side. So now I'm just going to kind of wipe down the front side of this. And if it happens to you guys, just make sure you do the best you can on your end on trying to get all this dust off of there. Okay, once you guys get everything dust free, you want to grab a piece of clear tape and we're just going to get a little section of it a little piece like that it doesn't have to be anything big and we're just going to put it towards the bottom just so it could hold the colored film in place so just put it alongside the bottom like so and make sure you don't get it past the little um, I don't even know what you call these little pieces right over here. Don't get it past that because that's where the LCD screen will show. So just put it alongside the edge here. Make sure it, it gets in contact with uh, the colored film or whatnot. And then just go ahead and push this down and it should hold it in place. So therefore you don't have to worry about it falling out or whatnot or shifting when you're riding. Okay, so now that we got that in its spot and everything's looking good. It's going to go ahead and put this in like so. And there you guys have it. Gonna guys give you a little showing right there. And there you guys have it. That's pretty much a uh, a new color of the LCD screen. So now we're gonna right now, and if you guys want to you guys could do the same as well, is to go ahead and maybe you know either take the take the gauge cluster like this, or you know, if you guys want to just kind of see how it really look like, just go ahead and put the front face on it, which is probably what I'm gonna do just to get a really clear view on how it look and then go to the bike we're going to go to the bike and we're going to actually test it out to see how it looks because like i said you don't want to have it on there and then find out that maybe it's it's a little too light for your liking you maybe want it a little darker therefore you'll have time to actually cut another piece out and put it over it and then you know put everything back together so right now that we have everything apart it'll be the best time to go check to make sure it's everything is to your liking and like i said if you guys wanted to mix and match with the numbers or if you wanted to do all the same now would be a good time to actually test everything out okay so now we're over at the bike and what we're going to do we're just going to do a test to see that make sure that everything is to our liking so we're just going to quickly connect it to the plug itself turn on the bike on an accessory and then test out the gauge to make sure that the gauge is actually to the color and light or darkness of the gauge so as you can see the red is really popping it looks really good i'm really liking it i'm really hoping that it's going to come out the way i'm envisioning when the when it's all lit up so okay so without further ado i'm going to put the camera on the tripod and then i'm going to put it on there i'm going to test it and once uh, i have the bike on on accessory mode i will show you guys on how it looks like Alright guys, I decided to dim the lights a little bit so that way we could get a better view of how the gauge cluster looks. I kind of set it in its place, so sorry that's kind of dark so you guys can't see what I'm saying with my hands. But I kind of, since we didn't, I, I didn't put the backing of it, I just put the front face of it. It's still loose, so I decided to just put it there for now and put it on the bike. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and uh, let's see how it looks. I'm really excited. Like I said, this is just a test to see that everything is to your liking. So let's go ahead and turn. Ooh. 
Ooh, I'm liking that. Holy cow, guys. Can you see that, guys? Super cool. This is... Oh, man. This turned out really amazing, guys. So much better than just having white uh, for the background. And it does a difference. And the way it looks in the camera is pretty much how it looks like in real life. So, like I said, guys, if you guys mix and match, that would that would look amazing. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that little blue on this side, uh, just to see how it look with the blue numbers and red uh, uh, LCD over here. But so far, I'm really liking it. Looks really good, really good. I'm really happy with the the, the color. It's not too you know it, the color is just right. But for you guys, if you guys want it just a tad bit darker, just go ahead and cut another piece and put it put it here and then this this probably be a lot more darker uh you know in the view but so far it looks amazing i am super happy with it i i can't wait to try the other colors actually so all right so i'm gonna go ahead and take it off the bike now but for me it's perfect i love it it looks i'm just at loss for words on a simple little you know a simple little hack you know could change the the way the gauge cluster looks and it just looks amazing all right, guys, enough of me talking. I'm just really blown away with how it actually came out and really looked. Uh, it's it's just, uh, it looks it looks incredible. So, and I'm really excited to see how the other colors are gonna look. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and remove it off of the bike and uh, put those other colors in. So let me get to it. Look when I turn on the gauge cluster. The shift light obviously comes on and it's a white. If you guys wanna change it, go ahead, cut a piece out and put it right over here. You'll actually change the color of the shift light. Why not? We're already, you know, changing everything else of it. And, you know, you'll have a unique bike. You can change it to whatever color you want. Well, not exactly all the colors you want, but at least you could change it to any different other color than white. So, yeah, we could just go ahead and put another piece. I'll just leave it white, but uh, maybe I'll put it to red, too. Who knows? So, yeah, so you could go ahead and uh, change the, the color of that. And it's, uh, you know, like I said, fairly inexpensive way of just changing up the gauge cluster and uh, giving it a different look. I already plugged it in the back. Now let's go ahead and turn on the gauge and see how it looks like with the blue numbering and the red gauge part. Oh, that looks really good. Wow. That looks so good. Wow, you guys could really go go at it and, uh, and really, you know, like I said, mix and match. It looks so good. All right, guys, so we're back inside, and I'm going to go ahead. The next color I'm going to put is going to be the blue, and I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to go ahead and remove the blue that I put over here just to leave it as white because the main we just want to see this. Like I said, mix and match. Put it all the same color, however you guys want to do. I'm not going to show you the process on putting the film again because it's the exact same thing. Go ahead, put the film, and then put the little piece of tape at the bottom so it could actually hold it in place. So go ahead that. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Next time I'll see you, will be at the bike to see how the blue looks like in this department. Oh, that looks good. In uh, real life, uh, I don't know if you guys could see it in the camera, but uh, in real life, it, it's like it's like a blue, but it's a little bit on the light side. Now, if you guys want to go ahead and do a darker blue, like I said, just cut another piece out and put it over it so you have two uh, rectangles of blue, and I think that would, I think that would um, really make it a little bit more uh, in the darker department, and I think it'll look a little bit better. Okay, this one's uh, this one's a green color, but uh, it's a little bit on the light side, so it kind of looks like a teal color. I think if I were to go green, I would definitely put another another uh, another layer of green to give it a little bit more darker green color. Ooh, this is a good one. This is a nice purple. I like this one. So this one's like uh, in in real life, it's uh, pretty much the same as you see in the camera. It's like a light purple. But if you want it a little bit more darker purple, just put another uh, another layer and you'll get a little bit more deeper purple. But I think this purple looks really good. Alright, this color is not coming out uh, really good on the camera. And this would be the orange color. I would say on the orange, you probably could get away with putting a second layer. But honestly, I think maybe three layers should do it to make it really orange. And this one it kind of just looks like an off-white. 
All right, now this one on the camera, it looks a little bit more on the green side. Well, it is kind of green, but this one's supposed to be that neon green. And it kind of just looks like the that orange one. A little bit just on the light side. It's not quite as green as that one. And uh, maybe maybe two layers will make it just a little bit darker green or whatnot, or a little bit more yellowy green. I'm not sure. But this one just has a nice... I mean, it, it looks all right, in my opinion. Uh, but not to the expectation like the other ones have been. All right, this is the pink one, and actually it looks pretty good. I thought because of the how how um, see-through it was going to be, it would be too light, and maybe a second one would be needed, but this is like a light pink. It, it looks pretty decent. If you want a little bit darker pink, uh, another layer uh, would make it a little bit darker. But not bad for this one. Alright guys, now that you're satisfied with the way the gauge cluster looks, now I'm going to go ahead and put everything back together. So at this point, since you already got all the dust out, you want to make sure that you try to go as fast as you can without getting attracting any more dust onto the gauge cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over, get your little screws, and put those back in their spot. So go ahead and uh, put this one in. I gotta realign the gauge cluster so I can get the screws in there. Sorry, my hands in the way, guys. So now we're just putting everything back together. Okay. So go ahead and uh, put your two screws, and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay. Now that we got our two screws in there, let's go ahead and let's put our cover back on, just so we could just keep any other dust particles out of being and in, coming inside. So as you can see, everything is nice and it also has a nice red like mirror look to it when the gauge is off which looks amazing it looks really awesome all right so now that we got that closed off now we could just uh, not worry about any particles getting in there everything is all nice and covered in that area so let's get our little towel put it down let's go ahead and flip our gauges over put our gauge cluster down like so and let's go ahead and, and re-put those two other screws which were located one right over here and one right over here so go ahead and put those two screws back on after that just pretty much is the reverse process just put everything back together so once you're done with that go ahead and get this cover flip it over put it down and then put the remaining screws on okay now that you're done putting all the little tiny screws in its place now we're gonna go ahead and grab our bracket and also put that back on so let's go ahead and put the bracket back on and put the screws back on as well okay now that we got our bracket back on let's go ahead and uh, flip this uh, guy over now also at this point you could probably could have changed the color of the led light over here but i decided to just leave it back to white all right so we'll probably edit that part all right so here's how the gauge cluster looks it's looking awesome like i just said earlier all right so now the gauge cluster is ready to go back on the bike and uh everything is pretty much the reverse process from what we did when we took out the gauge cluster okay so next one after we uh made sure that everything is good and the way we like it so now we're going to go ahead and put our gauge cluster on the bracket so let's go ahead and do that move these cables you may not have these cables i just have so much stuff on my bike so i'm gonna put that there and then what you want to do is let me zoom in so you guys can see exactly what i'm talking about okay if you guys see the this little hole right here that's going to correspond with this notch right here so you want to make sure you put this hole on top of here go ahead and move this cable and then just go ahead and slide it over like so so it should be like this right on top of it and then you want to do the same thing on the other side okay now that you got them both notched in the right spots now let's go ahead and put your bolt and tighten down the bolts next will be pretty much the the final touches of actually putting everything else back in which is going to be the uh, plastic piece that goes over here on both sides so make sure you put the line them up and make sure you're careful when putting the tabs in here because you definitely don't want to break the tabs when uh, putting them inside so be careful on those two areas so make sure you put one on this side one on the other side and then make sure you put your triangle piece which goes over here once you're done putting your parts in don't forget to put the screws in so one here one over here and those two little plastic ones on the inside so one there and one over there and then your triangle piece don't forget to put the two screws there and then also that little plastic one that goes right over here in this uh, area this little plastic one that goes there on both sides all right guys now here is the final view as you can see red on the right and blue on the left it's looking really good really love it really love the colors everything came out really nicely well guys that pretty much concludes the video I hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. If you guys found my video helpful and know of a friend that has an R3 and would like to 
show them this modification, don't forget to share my video. Share it to as many people as you like. Share it to groups, anywhere you could find that you think people and other riders will find this installation useful and helpful. I appreciate all the shares. I appreciate you guys for the support. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you haven't yet subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. That way you guys are up to date with my latest videos. And thank you for watching.